Isaiah chapter 43, we'll just get right into it. Verse 18, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. How many of you are ready for that? Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wow. I mean, what does it matter if there's a wilderness and a desert if you got a road and a river? How amazing is that? So don't even, uh, don't even consider it. How many of you know God didn't even consider your past when he planned your future? He doesn't even consider it. So wilderness, we, we don't use that word so much today. That, that means chaos. Anybody ever have chaos around you? Oh, yeah. Direction loss, confusion, discontent, trials, hard times. That's the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. Not just some rain, not just little sprinkles like we're having. Not, not even just a, a stream, not, not a well, rushing mighty rivers, like a flood. You know, a flood pushes everything out of the way. A flood of blessing. A, 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 a flood will uproot trees that have been there a hundred years. It'll, it'll throw car, it can throw cars around like the little matchbox Hot Wheels cars. It just pushes everything out of the way. There are good floods from God. Listen to this in the NIV. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Boy, that's a good word for somebody. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Berean says, do not call to mind the former things. Pay no attention to things of old. The New Living says, but forget all that. Everybody say, forget about it. Turn to your neighbor and say, forget about it. Yeah. Turn to your second choice and say, forget about it. <laughs> the New Living says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Woo, that's good stuff. <laughs> I remember in, uh, uh, Jan it was January 2020. The reason I remember is because I wrote it down and we just started our uh, 21 day fast. We every year we start our uh, do 21 days. We start the year off with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I was uh, praying in the spirit, and it came up out of my spirit. Quit thinking about what you're giving giving up, because we had just started the fast. I was already planning on where I was going to eat the 22nd day. <laughs> Nobody here. I'm just telling you about me. So our, uh, my last day, some of you started the second. How many of you started on the second? I started on the first, so I'm, I will be eating tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it came up, quit thinking about what you're giving up and start thinking about what you're making room for. Woo. Wow. Now, turn, turn if you would to Exodus chapter 9. Exodus 9 and verse 16, it says, But indeed for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. You know, Acts 1.8 says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's not for you. A lot of times, you know, especially... Uh, we love the moving of the Spirit. We love the Holy Ghost, you know. And uh, uh, we like it just for us. We like the goose, goose bumps and the shouting and how it makes you feel, you know, and, and rejoicing. And we love to see all the manifestations of the Spirit. That's, that's not a bad thing. But this power, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That isn't even for you. And it tells you what it's for. And then you'll be witnesses of me. He said, here, you'll be witnesses here. Everything north, everything south, and everywhere. Wow. This is the purpose I've raised you up, not for you. That I may show my power to others in all the earth. Not for you, in you, for others. And that's what go, grow, and give 
is all about. You know, it's written on the wall. It's, it's everywhere. We say it in every service. We talk about it all the time. Well, this verse in Exodus <clears throat> is summed up in that word go. Everybody say go. go. So you know, go and reach people far from God. We grow in our relationship with God and we give our lives to the plan of God. Uh, the first one, go and reach people far from God. That's what this is talking about. Declare my name in all the earth. Go and reach people far from God. Also, Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody say, all the world. All the world. That doesn't mean getting on a plane and going on a missionary trip. Although that might be part of something you do at some point. That means go into all of your world. That might be college for you. That might be the office for you. That might be at the grocery store. It means wherever you go, that's your world. Be a light wherever you go. Be a voice wherever you go. Be a witness of his good news. It doesn't mean get on a plane. So go and reach people far from God, not go far from home. Reach people far from God. The next one, we grow in our relationship with God. Uh, Matthew 28, uh, Jesus said, I've given you authority in the earth. Make disciples. Teach them the word. Amen? That's, that's what discipleship is. That's what growing our relationship with God is all about. That's what Wednesday night youth is all about. That's what Sunday morning junior high is all about. That's what West Coast Kids is all about. Special meetings like we're going to have tomorrow night. That's what it's all about. Pastor David's book group. That's what it's all about. Sunday morning service, what we're doing right now. We're growing in our relationship with God. And then third, give our lives to the plan of God. That's what life groups are. We're big on life groups around here. Uh, that's what Go Team is. Uh, that's what we call our helps ministry. And it, it isn't just because we need workers. You need to give. And not just the offering. You need to give a part of your life to God. And when you serve on a team, on a Go Team, it's not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a, it's a big deal in your walk with Him. So all of these, even though I've kind of defined go, grow, and give, and, and discipleship, and which, which is what, but they all kind of overlap and cross over uh, one another also. So I'm just clarifying because sometimes people will come up and say, well, when are we going? When are we going to go? And if you've ever asked me that, you know my response, every time you go to the store. Every time you go to work, every time you go to the gym. So the purpose of West Coast Life is to reach people. And a life without purpose is a life without effect. So purpose, the definition of the word purpose, and we need to know that. It says because for this purpose you've been raised up. Purpose means an anticipated outcome that is intended or that guides your planned actions. Wow. Wow. So purpose, everybody say purpose, is where you're going. Vision, everybody say vision, is how you get there. Now turn to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk 2 and uh, verse 2. It says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. That word vision in the Hebrew is also Revelation. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So this, uh, this is not just vision. This is revelation. In other words, this is not just you dreaming something outlandish up. This is things inside you from God. But you still have to do your part because it will not come to pass automatically. You need to do this. 
Write the vision, make it plain, that he may run who reads it. Now, it says, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We don't even really use the word tarry uh, uh, today. The first word tarry, there, and it's interesting because it uses that word, but it's two different Hebrew words. The first tarry is a hesitate. How many of you know a hesitation is not a stop, it's a comma. It's not a period. Though it hesitates... Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That last tarry means it will not be late. Even if there's a hesitation, if you're not really seeing anything happening right now, just a hesitation. Because it will come and it will not be late. How many of you believe God's right on time? He is right on time. Amen. So, uh, um, uh, West Coast Youth Wednesday night, made vision boards for 2024. We make them for ourselves. We, en we encourage you to make them. I talk about it uh, in detail a couple weeks ago. It, it's not a fad, it's just, it's doing this verse. Write the vision, make it plain, that he may run who reads it. So uh, I talked a little bit uh, a week or two ago, I don't remember exactly when, about my vision board. And I put things on my vision board, some big things that I kind of had on the inside. I really wasn't looking at, at, at things that I just thought I could do this year. I was looking at things I had in my heart. Some of those things are pretty big. Some of those things m might take a couple, three years to come to pass. You know, I mean, sometimes it's like things got to line up and things got to move. But put them on the board. Get it in front of your face. Start using your faith for something besides a parking spot target. <laughs> when you see it and you put it in front of your eyes. Uh, so I put some things that I had uh, on my heart about a, a, a recording that, that I wanted to do. When I put that on, we had absolutely no money for a recording, and we had all kinds of other projects going on, and no place to get money from even in the future if it came in. And then all of a sudden, there it was. But I saw it every day sitting there, and I put it in front of my eyes all the time. Well, uh, I, I have a I had a book in my heart to, to write, a book on faith, and I put that on there. And I never even, I, I would see that all the time, but I really, uh, you know, you just get busy. It's a, it's a lot of work and a lot of time, you know, to, to uh, uh, hundreds really of hours to do something like that and research and do everything. And so I put it on there, and then I was at a meeting in Texas, and Harrison House Publishers came up to me and said, uh, do you have a book? We, we feel like we're supposed to do a book for you. <laughs> well, even then, this is interesting because it had been on my, it had been on my board and I was believing God and I thought, when on earth am I going to have time to do that? And I didn't even take a, a meeting. And I was in Tulsa two weeks later at another meeting and they came and found me and approached me and said, we, we need to meet with you. We need to do this book. And so, the book's all done. So, there, we're in the editing process and everything now, and it's going to be out later on this year. And, but I kept put it in, putting it in front of my face and using my faith for it. I didn't know how, didn't know how to make, you know. So, I wasn't just putting it on there and then trying to make it come to pass on my own. I was getting it in my heart, and I was using my faith toward it. And then all these things just started lining up, and things start happening. So it was things that were kind of beyond me. I didn't know even how long it could take. But there's just something about seeing it. Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run who reads it. So it wasn't me dreaming stuff up. It was something that came out of my heart. It's a revelation. Write the revelation. Amen. And so uh, it, it, it's uh, amazing the impact and how powerful that can be. Where there is no vision, the Bible says in Proverbs, the people perish. So we are in a race. And in order to run our race, this verse says that he may run who reads it. Wow. So we, how many of you know we don't run backwards because you're going to get tripped up? Uh, you can't see clearly back there. Uh, what do you do with the past? 
Forget about it. So we need to see where we're going. That's our purpose. And how are we going to get there? That's our vision. Remember the first scripture, do not remember the former things, do not consider the things of old. I quoted uh, what Paul said. I I think I quoted, I might not have even quoted it, but turn to Philippians uh, chapter 3 and verse 13. He said, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. And then I like the King James of verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Wow. Now, what's amazing about this, he said, forgetting the things that are behind. He's talking about all kinds of amazing things. You know, we're glad, you know, when, when, if we've had a rough year, you know, at the, the end of the year 2023, we're like, whew, I'm glad that's over. How many of you are glad they're new? Oh boy, I'm glad it's a new year. I don't ever want to go through that again. We're talking about forgetting the bad things. Where you're supposed to forget those. Paul's even, Paul's talking about good stuff. You got to forget that too. You cannot go forward if you're thinking about the good old days. And let me tell you something. Anyway, they're not the good old days. You have selective memory. (laughs) Yeah, you remember some things. You You don't remember, and we had no air conditioning. And we had no this, and we had no, you, you, you were living in it at the time. All you remember is the good stuff. But your good days are not behind you, they're ahead of you. Our best days are yet ahead of us. Listen to this in Hebrews 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, look at this, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run, there's that run again, with endurance the race that is set before us. Wow. Now, we know we're supposed to lay aside sin, but this says lay aside every weight. You know, you you hear people say, uh, you know, Jesus preached love and acceptance. Uh, Pastor Beth was preaching, she goes, I, I keep finding the same thing Jesus preached, love and repentance. Yeah. Go and sin no more. Yes. Move, I, I always goes over real big. but <laughs> So we know we're supposed to lay aside the sin, but what about weights? What about things that aren't sin, but they're distractions? They're weighing you down. They're holding you back. So the enemy of your soul does not want you to see yourself progressing and moving forward, overcoming, having victory, uh, you know, living right, being consecrated, being prosperous, being the head and not the tail. Uh, He would rather give you visions of yourself falling down, losing. You know, getting, getting behind, failing, depressed, oppressed, doing without, stuck, stagnant, staying the same. With most people, they can visualize sin easier than they can visualize righteousness. Because the enemy knows the power of vision. You don't see many people with fantasies of righteousness. People aren't coming up and say, you know, every time I close my eyes, I see myself living holy and being blessed. You know what they say? Usually, pray for me. I don't see a way out. I don't see myself getting over this. If that's your vision, if that's how you see yourself, you will never get out of it. Because you will become what you think about. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what you visualize in your spirit will happen in your life. And since the enemy is not a creator, he's only an imitator. He is imitating a spiritual principle, but on the negative side. That if you, uh, if you flip it around the other way, it will work for your good. 
So vision or visual, visualization is a powerful thing. You, what does that mean? You have to see yourself on top. You have to see yourself with the victory. You need to see yourself overcoming. You need to see yourself in abundance. You need to see yourself healed. You need to see yourself whole. Well, how do, how do I do it? How do I turn it around? Well, one thing, write down your vision. It's a huge first step. Put it where you can see it. When you look at it, meditate on it. There's going to be nothing on that board about giving up. Only what you're going toward. If you have a vision, you ought to do a, a vision board. Or if you have a, a business, you need to do a vision board about your business. Huh? What do you want to make this year? Where do you want to go this year? What do you want to see your business do this year? And then, so write it down. Fasting uh, is another thing. The, the first, this is a huge step toward it. Giving up something and making room for God. Somebody uh, uh, told me they were fasting Instagram. I said, this will be the best 21 days of your life. Because you cannot fulfill the plan of God for your life comparing your life to someone else's life. You cannot do it. So here's the deal. Social media can be an amazing thing and a great tool and a great blessing. Absolutely. But it can also be a trap and a distraction. So I've, I've decided 2024 is going to be the best year I've ever had. But here's the deal. It's not out in the future somewhere. You know, as long as you keep it out in the future, in hope, that's not faith. We're already in 2024. It's here now. So this blessing is here. It's already started. Faith is now. Now faith is. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures that would be great for you to meditate on. Look at the 2 Corinthians 9, 8 in the Amplified. Uh, the, I think this verse probably should be just on everybody's vision board. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. How powerful is that? This is not spiritual blessings. Earthly. God is able to make all grace. Everybody say grace. Sometimes we make that kind of a religious abstract word and we say, oh, they just are so, because we have the word graceful. You know, oh, they just are full of grace and that we, usually we mean they're sweet and nice. But grace is a really strong word. It actually means an enablement or an empowerment. The grace of God, the grace of God coming on you will enable you to do things. Paul said it like this. He said, I did more than all of them put together, and yet it wasn't even me really doing the work. It was the grace of God on me. It's a supernatural enablement or a supernatural empowerment to do stuff that would be hard for you to do by yourself. How many of you could use some grace at work? Oh, yeah. It, the grace of God can help you do things. It's amazing. All grace, God is able to make all grace, and he describes what this grace is that he's talking about. Every favor and earthly blessing. Wow, not heavenly blessing, earthly blessing. Everybody say stuff. stuff. That means stuff. <laughs> earthly blessing is stuff. Earthly blessing is things here on earth. He's, he's able to make all... He, he, he's going to give you an empowerment, an enablement to make these blessings and favor. This is favor at school. Favor with your teachers if you're a student. Favor with your boss if you work under somebody. Favor with other companies if you work with other companies. Favor in, in uh, relationships. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, a favor of God on you. God's able to make all grace. What, what is that? Favor, every favor and earthly blessing. Come to you, not just come to you, in abundance. 
so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. And I've added, and it's on a stick-it note in my Bible, in 2024. God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance in 2024. So that I may always and under all circumstances, whatever the need, be self-sufficient in 2024. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation in 2024. We need to be meditating. So that's why it'd be so good to get it in front of your eyes and look at it all the time. John 10.10 10 is another great verse. Jesus said, the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. And then he said, but I came that you might have and enjoy life. Wow. I grew up in church thinking you weren't supposed to enjoy it. I didn't know anybody happy. They, we'd have a testimony service, you know, and they'd stand up and say, well, the devil's been after me all week. Bless his holy name. <laughs> well, nobody had pray that I make it through the other side. We've been, we've been going through it. I mean, we've been in tests and trials. That's, what kind of testimony is that? It's supposed to be a testimony service. I come that you might have and enjoy life. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's supposed to be, according to Jesus, not religion. According to Jesus, it's supposed to be light and easy, not hard and heavy. So if it's hard and heavy, you're not doing it right. I've come that you might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. There's that word again. And then he says, to the full <laughs> until it overflows. Wow. The Bible says that, that he is standing at the door and knocking. Why would he be standing at the door and knocking? Because the door's closed. So you're, uh, he can't do anything even if he wants to, and he does want to, you know? People often think God operates independently uh, of you. Well, it, he doesn't. He works through you. He works in you. Amen. Uh, but he went on to say, if anyone will open the door, I'll come in and I'll, I'll sit down and I'll kick it with you. That's my word, but that's basically what he said. So you got to open the door. So God is not the thief. He's not the killer. He's not the destroyer. There is a devil. <laughs> Who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So in, in a, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, that verse abound, it says abound in King James, abundance in the Amplified. It's a big word, and it's hard to translate, really, from the, from the Greek to the English because it loses part of its impact. We just have the word ab ab abundance or abound, but it, this is what it actually means. All this is in it. Superabundant. Beyond excessive, above and beyond, overflow. This is saying, this is how God wants earthly blessings to come to you. Super abundantly, beyond excessive, above and beyond, overflow. Isn't that a little extreme? Yes. Now you're finally getting it. God has intended to bless you extremely, over the top, beyond what you can even ask or think. Now to him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. I mean, with these kind of verses, uh, where, did it, where did it come from that connected to God is like bare minimum? And somehow that's holiness. How does that agree with what we just read in all these verses? New Testament verses, Old Testament verses. How does that agree with what Jesus just said in John 10? Well, how does that agree with what Paul is saying right here in 2 Corinthians? What God said in the Old Testament that we just read. So what God, what God is able to do for us is tied to something in us. Listen to Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 3.20. 
uh, in, in the Amplified. Now to him who by in consequence of his action of his power that is at work within us. God does not work independently from us. Well, whatever God wants to do. No, it doesn't have anything to do with what God wants to do. It has to do with what you're believing Him to do. The power that is at work within us is able to carry out His purpose. Wow, He can't even carry out His purpose unless you do it. And do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. That power that's working in us, it, it, it's not independently operating, it's not just God, it's God through you. He wants to bless you beyond what you can even imagine. But we're going to have to get this word on the inside of us. We're the, we need to write it down. We need to write this vision down. We need to make it plain that he may run who reads it. Because even if you see a little hesitation, if things aren't happening quite as fast as you thought, it's just a hesitation. What, what does that mean? God's getting things in order. What's happening? He's choreographing things and getting things ready. And, and, and sometimes there's a little pause while he's moving on this person and moving on that person and getting this thing in place and getting that thing ready. But it will surely come to pass and it will not be like, this is my year. How about you? Is this your year? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray if there's anyone in here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they wouldn't walk out these doors without making a decision for you. And I ask you for that in Jesus' name. Just for a moment, while every head's bowed, every eye closed, just in reverence to God is the only reason. If you're in here and you've never been saved, never been born again, never met the Lord, never received Jesus, those are all terms that we uh, get from the Bible, but this is what they all boil down to. If you didn't come up in church, you may not even understand those terms, but this is what they all mean. If you can't lay down to sleep at night and know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you were to die in your sleep tonight, that you'd go to heaven, you can know. This is not a hope so salvation, this is a no so salvation. So that's the first invitation if you don't know. Second invitation is this. Maybe you, you have uh, served God, but you've kind of been going your own way, doing your own thing, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, if that's anyone in here. And the third invitation is this. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the most powerful thing that will happen to you in this life. And let me just say that uh, we have these altars open at the end of the service, and we have people that are prayer warriors. These prayers... Uh, they, they pray heaven and earth together. You can always come down here for prayer for anything, but especially if you answer uh, any of these invitations. So I'm not, I'm not calling anybody out. We're all going to pray a mass prayer here together, but this is just for me so I can see you to pray for you. If that's you, you say, you know what? I don't know for sure if I die in my sleep tonight, I go to heaven or I want to rededicate my life. Slip your hand up real quick so I can see it. Anybody in the room before we all pray together? I see that. You can put it down. Anybody? I see that. You can put it down. Anyone else before we all, we all join together in prayer? All right, and there might be some that are joining us via live stream. Even if you didn't lift your hand or you should have, just joined with us right now. We can all do this. Lift one hand up toward heaven. That's where your help comes from. Say this after me and mean it with your heart. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me with your precious blood and make me whole. And I'll follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on and give him thanks that heaven's your hope.